gentleman yields back. Dr. Murphy is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for coming and visiting with us today. I've always been a great, great lover of museums. Wherever I travel, I'll always go to a museum because I just, I'm a, a lover of history. I'm lover, a lover of the human experience. Uh, a few months ago, uh, I took my, uh, my 26-year-old son. We went, uh, he's in NASCAR, and we went over to look at some of the exhibits there, and uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see such joy that he had in a field that, uh, that he's now um, fully immersed in. I will tell you, um, I loved my experience, but a couple things bothered me there. Um, you said earlier that you don't believe partisanship and everything. Let me ask you again about partisanship. Where does that belong in our Smithsonian? Smithsonian really is a place that shouldn't be partisan. It's a place that sh that's driven by scholarship. That doesn't mean there aren't interpretations that people don't always agree with but we're really driven by scholarship. First what bothered me, what really actually just kind of stiffened me up because I didn't understand, I didn't expect it from this institution, is that there was a, an exhibit on Nixon and it wasn't a cartoon that was put up, it was something put up by Smithsonian staff that described nasty Nixon, boom, boom, boom. And then they said something also pejorative about Ronald Reagan. On, on the written placard from the Smithsonian and I, it took me back. That's not the Smithsonian I remember. And so, uh, you know, delving into this a little bit more, I found, con in contrary to what you said, a lot of partisanship. You guys have this wonderful uh, exhibit praising the superstar Dr. Fauci because amidst a cacophony of misinformation and denial, the advice from Dr. Fauci, the leading, nation's leading epidemiologist, rang true. Well, we found out since that time that Dr. Fauci lied. There's point blank evidence that this, uh, that he covered up the fact that the virus did come from Wuhan's lab. So I don't think he's a superstar. I don't think he was praised. He absolutely lied to the American public. And as a physician, he's damaged the reputation of the institutes of medicine across this country. So this was something taken by the left, praising somebody who actually lied to the country. And so, I'm hopeful that there'll be some revision of what's gone back and actually truth be told that he was praised, but then he really was shown that he lied to, to further his own interest. Let me get something back to really, you know, I, I want you to succeed because I, I think when everybody talks about the Smithsonian, they talk about greatness. This is all something when you live from a kid, you, when you make the visit to Washington, D.C., it's all about going to the Smithsonian. You get in the Air and Space Museum and you marvel at things. But I will tell you, when I saw this exhibit in 2020 that talked about whiteness, whiteness in 2020, here we are, we're trying to, do, to, to, to have a society that rather than having all these silos and every being told that you're in privilege, you're in this, you're in that, and trying to pull things together, partisan politics is now trying to divide us. And I'm going to go through this, and this is just baffling to me. This is in the Smithsonian, assumptions about white culture. And it says rugged individualism, family structure, emphasis on scientific method, history, Protestant work ethic, Religion, no tolerance from deviation from a single God concept. This is absolute anti-racial propaganda. Why would anything like this be in the Smithsonian Institute? Now, it's my understanding, what I think you're seeing, I can't really see it, is... You should be very well versed in this. You were the head of the Smithsonian at the no, time. No, let me explain. What it is, is there was a document that is the whiteness document that was put up online that I took down immediately because I think that the document itself was wrong and flawed. I do think, however, it's important for the Smithsonian to help the country grapple with questions of race. So I'm not gonna run away from that, but I agree with you very much that that document is not the kind of document that should be at the Smithsonian, and if it's what I think it is, I pulled that down. How does this help us with race? That's All why it I pulled it down. All it does is divide us. This is divisive language saying that white people, any, we don't tolerate any deviation except a single God concept. Like I, I said, how is that helpful? I don't understand that. I, I, I wish someone could explain that to me. 
I pulled no, it, that it's down. Not, it's not white people. It's not black people. It's not Latino people. We're Americans. I and I just, I just, this is really, it hurts my heart because I think instead of us coming together in the last several years, we have formed more silos based upon the amount of melanin in our skin than have ever been seen in our history. And it is just, it, it is pathetic that the science, the bastion of, of uh, history in our nation, the Smithsonian Institution, is reinforcing those things. So uh, I'm just sad about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. The gentleman yields back. Ms. Bice is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Bench, for being with us this morning. Um, in your opening statement, you wrote that you believe we should be, uh, the Smithsonian should be in every home and every classroom in the country. 